My name is Junaid, uh, I'm 46 years old. Um, I converted to Islam in 2003, so 13, 13 years. English through and through, um, England born and bred. I was born and raised in Sheffield. Uh, I live in Wakefield in West Yorkshire now. Uh, but yes, yeah, as, as, as English as I think you can get. <laughs> I'm, I'm of, of a Christian background, uh, Church of England. Um, my parents were um, definitely had a, a belief and a faith. Um, uh, we did Sunday school up to the age of maybe four, five, six years old. Uh, at that point, we, we moved house, and as we moved house, I think that never continued. Uh, so, uh, kind of a, a belief and faith was always there in the household, but not necessarily. A driven religious belief or faith, but I, it kind of always fell within me. Um, as I grew a little bit older, because it was covered at school, we always looked at religion. Religion was something that was very important. I then started actually going to Christian groups myself. Um, at, not much older than that, probably eight, nine, ten years old, and that carried on for quite a few years. So there was always a belief and a faith and a, you know, and, 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 a, and a need or desire to to know about religion. Um, then I kind of hit the, the mid-teen years and kind of the, the, if you like, the religious side, the religion side faded away a little bit. The faith never did, the relig you know, the being religious, if you like, never, never faded, but the, the attending classes, the, you know, going three, four times a week, going on Fridays, going on Sundays, that, that, that subsided, shall we say, and the things that teenage boys do kind of took over, you know what I mean? And as I, as I went through from, from that stage, there was always this belief, there was always this faith, I knew there was something bigger than me. I, I never really thought about what it was, and it was only later on that I realised that I'd always had that, that faith and that belief. Um, but if, if nothing else, it came down to that, that, generally speaking, people are good. You know, if you do good things, good things will happen. If you give, you'll get, you know, just, just a, a nice approach to life. But... Not a, not a, not a, um, you know, a formal religious aspect within my life, if that makes sense. As I say, I had, I had a good job, uh, I had a nice car, I lived in a nice house, I had the trappings of a, of a, of a great life. Um, my job at the time, I was in training, uh, so I delivered training courses. Um, I'd been doing it for quite a number of years, I'm well educated, you know, I had a master's degree. Um, and the training that I did was in a very white male dominated industry. So it was, you know, training to, to, to white guys um, who, who have a certain mentality and a certain mindset and the very macho, you know, kind of mindset and, and, and the way that they lived their life and, you know, the work and play was, was all kind of geared around the same, same issues and the same things. And one of the courses that we ran on a very regular basis was a two week residential training course. So it was based in a hotel, all the training was done in the hotel. We were resident in the hotel. So you've got a load of guys, you know, in a hotel where they can pretty much do whatever they want in the evenings. And all they've got to do is wander out of their room into a training room the next day, you know, and that kind of cultivated a certain kind of attitude and mindset across the course, which was amusing at times, shall we say. Um, and it was always the same kind of thing, same kind of people. And then one course, we had somebody on the course and you know, people went, went into the bar in the evening and this person wasn't drinking. And, you know, given the kind of people that we had there, so, oh, so wh wh why are you not drinking? And they explained it was, A, because they were Muslim, um, and also the reason they weren't eating during the day and they weren't drinking anything was it was actually random. So, um, I, my ignorance for Islam knew no bounds at, at this point. I, I, I didn't... Two circumstances didn't really mix with Muslims, didn't know Muslims, didn't know anything about Islam. And, you know, people were asking these questions and I found the answers really interesting. So I just found myself sort of gravitating towards this person and, 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 and having a conversation. So, oh, so, so when you say you're fasting, what does this mean? And when you say Ramadan, what does this mean? And then when it gets to religion, well, what does this mean? It was quite an, ex it was a, well, it was an enlightening, eye-opening, incredible experience really, because all of a sudden, and I kind of categorised it afterwards or, or explained it afterwards, that I found I was receiving lots of answers to questions I didn't realise I had. And it, and it all made perfect sense and it was all very rational and, and it was just like, wow. So, oh, so this is the same 
religion, in fact. I mean, this is what I've lived for all of my life. It's, it, it, it's not your religion and my religion. It's, there's no difference. It's, it's the same, you know. Also, you know, Jesus Christ is an amazing individual, but he's not God. You know, he, he's, he's an individual. He's a, a person. He's a prophet. That kind of makes more sense, you know. And just lots of, of things and conversations. And th- so across this two weeks, where everybody else would disappear to the bar, I would be just, just sat, you know, tapping this person for information and just pulling information out and conversing. And gradually all these lights were coming on and, and it just made so much sense. And I wasn't looking for it, I wasn't seeking it. I, I didn't feel a need for anything in my life, but all of a sudden, ping, 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 all of these, these answers were coming in. Literally over two weeks, um, I, I think even I was thinking, okay, this, this, is, this is really cool, you know what I mean? This kind of makes sense. But then that breeds an awful lot of apprehension and I, I'm not going to do this, you know, you know what I mean? This, this, no, this can't possibly happen. So there's lots of issues, lots of potential problems. Um, so we, we kept in touch uh, after the course, because if the course was residential, they moved back to their part of the country. We kept in touch and I just became, I think, the most annoying person in the world because I was just, so, so what about, on the telephone, so what about, so what, so what about, and just question after question after question after question. And I was, I think I recognised that I was looking for the floor. I, I, I was looking for the thing that would stop me ultimately taking this, this step that I think realistically I'd, I, I knew ultimately I was going to take, you know what I mean? And I was looking for the floor. So what about this and what about that? And asking all these questions. And the, the, the patience of this individual <laughs> was phenomenal. Was I, I think that God you know, sends angels in many forms and whoever was guiding them was just, it was incredible because I must have annoyed the heck out of them. So I'm asking question after question after question after question. Yeah, trying to find the floor, trying to find the thing that would stop me making this move. Um, and eventually, it, this might have been six months, and you know they'd ask, they'd tell me, find this book, read this book, obviously the Quran, you know, take this, just just have a look, and then I'd ask another question, and then I'd read something and ask a question, and they just answer these questions, answer these questions, answer these questions, and eventually, I don't know, maybe five, six, seven months, they kind of said, right, I, I think it's time for you to visit a mosque. I think it's time for you to go, and you know, I can answer so many questions. Um, I, I, you know, what do you think? And I was like, I, I, yeah, I, what, wow, okay, let, let, let's do that. So um, I, I just said, well, so what do I do? You know, how, do I, how, do, how, does, how does that happen? I've never been in a mosque. I'm comfortable going to church. I'm used to that. I've never been into a mosque. And so they gave me a few things, you know, take your shoes off <laughs> at the door. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Everybody will like you. It won't be a problem. Um, uh, I go to the mosque by myself. You know, I drive up and then I drive past and then I drive past and then I drive past and then eventually, you know, pull up the courage and I've never felt so white. <laughs> you know, I've, I've never felt so nervous. This is a confident guy and all of a sudden I'm, I'm so... And, and, I, and, I, and I kind of went into the, to this place and I see these, these, these shelves with shoes on them. So I'm thinking, oh, okay, so I'm kicking my shoes off. And a chap just came out and said, hi, what, you know, can I, can I help you? And I'm thinking, oh, he obviously thinks I'm here to check the fire escapes. You know, you know what I mean? This is the, and he said, you know, can, can I help you? And I said, well, I'm, I'm really interested, in, really interested in, in Islam and, and, and I wondered if you could maybe answer some questions. And bang, the cake came out and the tea and the drinks and people came around and it was, it was just an, 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 the warmth, the, you know, everything I've been told would, would happen happened. It was quite extraordinary. And, you know, hours later, I left the mosque just already a different person. Uh, it, 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 just the warmth and, 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 and the, I don't know, the, um, just the attitude that people had that I'd seen in this other individual and then other people since then was, yeah, was, 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 was magnified, if you like. And so um, it, it was then easier to explore and ask the questions and get a bit more guidance. Um, and, then, and then very shortly after that, I, I accepted Islam and yeah, no, no turning back. It was extraordinary. <laughs> Uh, but, but from nothing, from n- I wasn't seeking anything to really don't want to do this. You know, how can I stop this happening to, okay, there's no flaw. Every single question has a rational answer to it, has, a, has an explanation. And it just made 
sense everything that I'd done as a child. So, you know, who was Noah? Who was Moses? Who were these people that I'd kind of heard of? And they're all explained. All of these things were now explained. It all made just perfect sense. So, uh, when I, I made my shahada, it, it was um, quite, an, quite an, an extraordinary experience, actually. Um, I, uh, approaching it, I assumed it'd be really difficult. I assumed there'd be lots to it. I assumed, I just, just, I just again, assumption, assumption, assumption. I, I, I'm not born into this. I didn't know, that, you know, things that other people may take for granted, I had absolutely no concept of. And then when somebody explained to me, oh no, all you will be doing is, and I said, well, that, that seems really quite straightforward. <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll, we'll give that a go. So as a result, I, then my pendulum swung so far the other way where I thought, oh, this, this'll be easy then. This'll be, this'll be really straightforward. It, it was very simple, it was very straightforward, but the transition was really quite visceral and quite ex extraordinary. This, just this, this, I, I want to say a, a, a feeling of, of warmth or, or a, a glow. I don't know really how to describe it, but there was a, 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 a physical manifest, there was a, a change that, that you could feel the change, if that makes sense, where you just, you say these words and you say them in Arabic and then somebody's explaining what that means in English. It's not just a case of, I'll say these words and, and we're not going to tell you what they're, you know, it's all explaining intelligence. It's a very simple statement, but such a, a profound statement, but such an obvious one, you know, saying, well, I, I believe in one God and I believe that the Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, is his messenger. And, and ultimately, you're making this declaration and so simple, so simple. And this, this, just this, War, I'm repeating myself, I apologise, but this warmth, but this warmth, this glow, this, you, I could feel the transition. It was extraordinary. It was absolutely extraordinary. And from then, the, the, the response from people, that it's like they were experiencing it as well. The, the utter joy. And, uh, it's, it's very hard to say. It's, it, it's, it's very hard to, to put across, but just people, you know, we're in a very formal environment but they literally leapt up and, and could, were hugging me and, and, and congratulating it was it was amazing it was amazing it was absolutely incredible i mean the concerns for me th there were many as i say i was genuinely looking for the for the floor um i'm thrilled that i couldn't find it um but the concerns were i, I think a lot of them were about perception how other people would perceive me um so as an example you know living in the culture in which i was raised people drink and, and it's a it's a large part of the culture and when I say drink they drink alcohol and it's a large part of the culture and not doing that might make it difficult to mix with certain people and certain people might even frown on that I mean I now look at that and think oh hey ho you know what I mean it, it, it has absolutely no bearing or impact now but at the time that was a that was a big issue and um it was uh, it was not long after 9-11 um there was a certain perception around the world even with that, as I say, my ignorance knew no, no bounds. I, I, I didn't know a great deal about Islam until meeting people, and then it was a, a huge transition because the people that I was meeting were so much in conflict with, or how they behaved was so much in conflict with, with what you were seeing and what you were hearing and what you were being told. It was extraordinary. So, but the, you know, there, there was an issue with, with regards to that, and um, a lot of it yeah, came down to the issues of perception. How would people view me? Um, I'd worked for the same company for an awful long time. I was well established. I had a, a role that put me out into the into a, a huge network of people. I, I stood up in front of people and delivered training courses. Um, could I could I still do that? If was my life going to change, and were those changes going to be, you know, ultimately negative? Was it going to make my life more difficult? I feel extraordinary even mentioning alcohol now because. At the time, it's, even saying it, it feels, it feels horrible saying it, it feels weird saying it, um, because at, at the time it just seemed a, a focal part of so many people's lives, and then now that it has absolutely no bear, and you just think, why is that? Why do people waste so much time and money and sanity, and why do they allow things to just sap the goodness out of them? I don't, I don't know, maybe, maybe that's going a little bit too far, but... Um, absolutely no issue I much prefer not drinking I much prefer my children being in an environment where they don't see alcohol I much prefer or when they do see it 
it's hard to see alcohol in a positive form when you're a child and all you see is what it does to people. Um, ultimately, the issues that I had, certainly around, around alcohol and perception and how I would be perceived and how I'd be seen, A, ultimately don't matter. They, they genuinely don't matter. Um, but the one thing I found is I, I, I fundamentally don't feel like I've changed at all. All that's happened is my life has just got better and better and better and better. Okay, I don't drink, no issue. You know, it, it doesn't make any difference at all. But all that happens is the circle of friends that you meet with just becomes different. And from my point of view, that's much, 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 much better um, because the circle of people that I meet with have a mentality and a mindset that there's one God and we talk about God a lot and, and you know, this comes into your life and how it affects your life and you just view things differently. Fundamentally, I don't think I've changed. I've changed some of the things that I do, but overall I feel like I'm the same person. I'm as good as I ever was. It's just that now that goodness has a purpose and a reason behind it. Um, uh, yeah, life's brilliant. All these apprehensions about how will I be perceived. There would be some people who wouldn't even know that I'd converted to Islam. Some people wouldn't even know because I, I just live my life in a way that I'd like to think people should live their life. Yes, so if there were any apprehensions, it was you know, the, the, the negativity that might come from embracing and accepting Islam. And actually, it, it's been nothing but positive. Everything about the, the, the journey has been positive. You just have a new focus and a new drive and a new reason you know, for, for getting up in the morning, for the things that you do. Everything that you do is with a purpose and with a vision and with a view. And um, uh, um, uh, If you take it to a very, a, a very basic um, a very basic principle is to help the people around you and then ultimately, you know, so that hopefully God will be happy. Yeah, so, so overall, the, the change that Islam has brought has been, well, nothing but positive. It's all been positive. There's all positive changes. Um, there's changes, if you like, within your mentality. I, I, when I get up in the morning, I know why I'm getting up. I know why I'm doing the things that I'm, I'm doing. But also, I, I want to do things for the people. I want to help the people around me. Um, one of the things that I find in, in the Muslims that I meet and the Muslims that I speak to is this desire to help those around them, the desire to help your neighbour, the desire to help anybody around you. Whether they're Muslim or not, anybody that comes to you, you're, you're actively trying to find a way to help them. Because if you can help them, if you can help their life, if you can make their life a little bit better, the world gets a bit better and, you know, God should be happy with that. It, it, all of these things, it, it's what people should do. But you now realise why you're doing it and it's it's an amazing feeling and it's there all the time and I see my children doing it I see my children wanting to help other people I see my wife all my friends it's it's extra and, and not you, you you don't lose anything from that you're gaining all the time it's not about you giving things away it's what you get from helping other people so the the, the religion encourages you to help other people but all the time that that's happening, you're, you're growing and you can feel this, yeah, this, you get a great feeling and a great sense of joy whilst you live your life. That's as well as everything that you get from the religion itself. Just your whole philosophy, your whole way of life is, you know, what can I do to better the world? What can I do to better the people around me? And as a result, what can I do to, to improve myself? I'm, I'm not one for giving advice, but my first piece of advice would be ask questions. There'll be lots of things running around your head where you're thinking, well, what about, what about, what about, what about? Ask the questions because I'm telling you, there will be an answer and it'll be an answer that will make this journey more easy for you. Um, and ultimately, yeah, do it. Do it. I, I, I can't be one to tell you and, and it is entirely up to you. All I would say is the temptation to procrastinate and put things off in life is a big one. Um, not with this. If you want life to get better and improve, I personally would say, yeah, do it. That's, but that's up to you. It's, it's up to you. Ask the questions, alleviate the doubt, and yeah, take the step.